Hi, this is Darren from ALO Upholstery and Interiors. Today I'm going to show you how to upholster this chair using an ST3 lift table. This will be the type of staple I'll be using. Now I'm just using a scrap piece of material as lining. Now I'm just cutting straight to the wood and the letter V. Now I'm gluing half inch firm foam in the middle so it gives it a little puff to it. Now I'm using two and a half inch firm foam. This is the type of spray gun that I'm using but there are other ones out there that are a little different. And this is the type of glue that I'm using as well. Now I'm using a thin layer of fiber so it gives it a nice soft feel to it. Now I'm using a black vinyl material like this. So I like to lock a few staples in front and then work on the back side. So this part is one of the hardest cuts. You want to make sure you allow enough fabric to wrap around the foam so you don't see it. I'm allowing about half inch to tuck into the foam. So you want to do this to both sides first and then flip the fabric over. Now that I'm done cutting both sides, I'm going to be cutting the letter V. You want to make sure it's in between the wood. Now I like to lock a few staples on the side and then I'll work at the back again. So with vinyl, I find it very tricky to clean the wrinkles, so you want to make sure you lock a few staples everywhere and then try to clean it out. So to make a nice folded plate, I went up stapling as much as possible where the frame is. Now I'm just marking where the center of the frame would be.
so the best way to put the outside back would be to pull up and down only, not side to side. So I'll be using quarter inch foam for the back. So I'm marking the center of the cardboard so I line it up with the center of the frame. So for the back I marked how many buttons I want to put on and that was 7. So I drilled the holes like this just to fit the buttons with prongs through. So you want to make sure the center of this wood will match the center of the frame as well or else the button will be crooked. So now I'm cutting the foam on an angle like this so it's easier to work with. So the cutted part will be facing the wood. So you want to make sure all the edges are properly sprayed and glued down. So now I'm just spraying a very thin layer of glue on the vinyl and foam together so it doesn't shift when I put the buttons on. So I'll be using a half inch die like this and a prong. I'll be putting the fabric on the wrong way, like this, and then the shell. So the button maker that I'm using is called Wade. This is how it looks like when you compress it together. Now I'm using a 12 inch needle like this. Now to find the hole from the front, I'm going to poke it from the back side. So once you find the hole from the front, you want to use your prong and push it through. So now that you're done putting the wood on, you want to make sure the center of the wood is marked with the center of the frame. So now I'm stapling the wood with the frame so it doesn't move around. So with the curve back like this, it's best to lock a lot of staples where you need to first and then start doing your stapling. To do the weld, we cut about 2 inch thick and then we're going to wrap it with the other two cords together. So once you're done, you want to cut the other extra fabric off like this, so we could glue it easily. Now I'm using a hot glue gun like this. So to start it and end it, you'll want to cut the cord off a little bit in the inner side.
So here's how the finished piece looks like. So thank you for watching and if you like the video please give us a big thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed to our channel please do.